what are some nuggets of of entrepreneurship or small business that you would say you're, you're, you're writing in your journal you mm-hmm. here are some top nuggets that kind of just stand out about how to navigate being an entrepreneur I would say number one is be true to you mm. and I would say that because many times people tell me I'm I um I undercharge. Yeah. You're worth so much more than that. <laughs> and my biggest thing is that for me, I feel like God gives you um, what you need, um, but he also provides you your wants. Yeah. So I don't feel like I need to be a millionaire to live well. Yeah. Uh, and so when I say, oh, this is my pricing, mm-hmm. people are like, oh, my God, that's so small. That's not... But my clients, like... From from you all to um, the mayor of Atlanta, mm-hmm. like I didn't solicit the mayor. Yeah, I got her from relationships that I built. People trusting me off of my not just a, like loyalty, but there has to be a true trust for me to come into your home because not only do I do I have a meal delivery. Yeah. I go into people's homes Monday through Friday. Yeah. As a personal chef, I am in three individuals' home a day. Yeah. Um, they are usually not home. You have to be able to trust someone, oh. a character. Completely. Right? Completely trust them with your home, with your food, with all those things. And so I feel as though be true to yourself. <laughs> Everybody, this is your boy Garrett sitting here for idea to invention. I'm feeling a little bit perplexed because my right hand gal or left hand gal, however you want to put it, <laughs> is not with me today. It's kind of weird, yes. right? You know when yes. you don't have your yes. your road dog with you, <laughs> but um, she's not feeling well. She's under the weather. At least that's what she told me. No, no, for real. No, that, that's, <laughs> that's what's happening. She's under the weather. Mm-hmm. So um, kind of do the solo thing, but that's all right, because that's what we do. We keep it moving. Yes, yes. And we are so blessed today to have. See, it's rare that I get to bring someone on or we get to bring someone on that we have a personal connection with. Um, and... Um, so just a little bit of story before I introduce this fabulous person. If you have a busy, crazy life, you and like we have, you know, it, it's it's five of us, right? So it's Sita and I and the three boys and two dogs and and <laughs> and we got school, we got sports, we and it's and life is just life is yes. happening. Um and you sometimes just don't have time to do some of the simple things that in life mean the most. that mean the most. <laughs> and so um, we began, because when, when we first thought about having someone else cook for us, mm-hmm. we, we thought about it in the space of, we ain't at that level. We, that's, that's some that's, that's some, some celebrity that's some celebrity <laughs> stuff there, right? Yes. And, and we didn't seriously, to be honest with you, we didn't think that it was a feasible yeah. thing. It's just because that, that's my mom would look at me like, "Are you? Well, you better get in that kitchen and bake exactly. some chicken, exactly, <laughs> <laughs> right?" Um, and then and so so we decided when we transplanted from the Chicagoland area down here to Georgia mm-hmm. to Atlanta Metro to dab our toe into that into yes. the personal chef space. Um, and I will let you all know, not all personal chefs are created equal. They are not. They're not. <laughs> and so the fir- our first attempt, um, uh, sweet lady, but just was not a fit for our family. Exactly. Um, and then my wife, as she... So miraculous. She, she, it's like she trolls and she, she, I don't know. She just finds 
goodness. Yes, yes. <laughs> she got in touch with Miss Chef Diane. Oh, look, okay. All right. So, Chef Diane is Chef is, is Diane Personal Chef Services. Website is the Divine Chef Experience dot net. Yes, yes. And all I can say, y'all. It's all divine. It's divine. It's That's divine. All I can say it's divine. It's divine. You know what? And if you're thinking about doing it, just reach out to Chef Diane. Yes. So I, with all that babble, with all that said, <laughs> I need to introduce you all to a lovely lady, Chef Diane Thomas. Yes. Such a pleasure to be Yay! here. Yay. <laughs> Chef Diane provides a service that I believe that all people need to try and they do they really really do mm. <laughs> so miss diane so yeah, i said i'm gonna yeah. say i'm gonna call you miss diane because yeah, everybody know you're a chef but I'm yeah call that's you okay diane. yeah so give us who chef diane is and then and, and then we'll, we'll start there mm-hmm. about who you are mm-hmm. and in and, and your beginnings mm-hmm. and then we'll phase into what you do, the services you provide, and the the divineness you provide. Sounds good. So uh, I was born and raised in a small town in Michigan called Muskegon, Michigan. (laughs) And uh, I come from a family of all girls. So my mother, I have a younger sister and an older sister and a a younger uh, adopted sister. And all girls, and so we all can cook except one. (laughs) <laughs> the older she, she doesn't cook. However, uh, I was first generation college student, yeah. uh, and so cooking was something that I always enjoyed. My favorite um, subject in high school was home ec. Okay. However, uh, I was dual enrolled as a culinary student uh, while I was in high school, and I was a first generation college student. So oh. it was not the the you're going to go to college. It was kind of like you're going to do what. <laughs> And so you can go get that you, job over there. <laughs> when you and and you know the thing is is when I went to school it yeah. was more so about my older sister wasn't able to go. Okay. Oh. So she was like, "You're going, and you have no choice, and you're going." Ooh, you had a whole different level of responsibility. With whole that, so. different one. Whole different one. And so I went to school, and I don't think my mother was too excited or happy about it. Um, really. She she was excited after it happened. Okay. Um, but it was a you made your bed type. Okay. Now lay in it. Wow. So when I got there, uh, it was it was me. It <laughs> Just was you. It was me. It was like um, and now hindsight generational curses when you're breaking those, you sometime are in the desert. Ah. Or in the wilderness, I would yeah, say. Yeah. Yeah. And um and I learned that early on. That okay. sometime God puts you in some just situations because um, you're the first to do it. And sometimes when you're the first to lead the way, it's a whole <laughs> oh. different avenue, journey, everything. Uh, so went to college, mm-hmm. got a four-year degree, left, um, moved to Chicago. Okay. Uh, I had an internship um, with uh, Airmark, which is while I was in school. Yeah. Uh, I worked 95,000 jobs while I was in college. <laughs> um, all of them were, you know, one of them paid, you know, I was an RA, so got yeah. room and board. I worked in the cafeteria. I worked in the catering department. I worked in minority student services. Um, I went to Central Michigan University. <laughs> but it taught me so much about the life that I was going to be able to li- to you know lead like whatever I wanted I knew how to get it and that's the thing so you mm-hmm. had the characteristic of hustling early on even before college but yes so do you yes, do yes, you yes. and I've always been interesting interested in understanding do you think that that characteristic Is it something that people are born with or is it, help me. So look, I think it's definitely something you're born with. Uh, So my father, I ran track and I was a hurdler and I was good. (laughs) And I remember my father said he came to a track meet and it was a little rainy. And he says, I go over the first hurdle, 
fine. Yeah. But the second one, I fall. Now, I was leading the way, but I fall. So the girls are past me. He says, I get up and I run and I fall again. I fell over. There's 10 hurdles. Yeah. I fell over nine of them. I only made it over the first one. Even the last one, I fell. And he says, that told me I would never have to worry about you in life. Because no matter how many times you fail, you are always going to get back up. And he was like, from that day on, those are th- that's nothing you teach. That is nothing, that is you, nothing teach. you teach. And so he was like, I knew that that was in you. And I was probably in 11th grade um, when that wow. happened. And so that's kind of been my thing of you know, knowing that you can fall, but it's just like, how do you finish? How do you finish the actual race? And it wasn't about who was in the stands because I was morbidly embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> it was just about me and me finishing that race. Yeah. And so when I finished the race, that's where we were. And so, no, I think that that's something that's in you. It's more likely events that have to bring it out of you. Okay. But it's in you it's already. It's in you. Yeah. Oh my yeah, god. That, that's sure. that's such a that's an awesome picture of of perseverance. That mm-hmm. that's an awesome picture of just how you never ever have to have to give up. You don't and, no. And the thing is, you didn't realize that in the 11th grade that that experience was something that is so prevalent. Oh no. No, no, no. I didn't know what that meant. I meant I, I just made a fool of myself. <laughs> you just kept falling. I just kept falling. That's what I really thought. But um, when he sh- later shared with me about it and he was like, and, and it makes sense now how they know that I'm going to go into, I'm literally fall off the edge. And when I fall off the edge, then I'm going to still try to figure it mm-hmm. out before I call and say, hey, I fell off the edge and I broke a couple of bones. Can you come and help me? <laughs> I don't know if that's good always. Right, I'm like, it's, well. no, but but, and I found that I'm a lone warrior. I've always been that way. Um, it's not always um, the best, um, mm-hmm. but the older I get and the more when I jumped into the entrepreneurship, is it's you you can't do it alone. That's one thing you can't do mm-hmm. in the in this realm of work. You yeah. cannot do it alone. And when you do, you won't be successful. Wow. So. Y'all, Chef Diane's laying some gems on y'all today, and we just got started. All right, okay, so we're gonna take a break, and when we come back, um, I want to understand. I want to begin to talk about, um, because I know you worked in corporate America. Yes. Right, yes, and yes, yes. Those experiences, all the way up until the point of when your transition began, mm-hmm. right? Because I want to take people on a journey that are listening about here's here here's some really practical steps. Mm-hmm. And if you listen, you'll hear the steps that you can take in order to get to your vision. Yes, for sure. Right? For sure? Okay. For sure. For All sure. right, y'all. You heard it. So if you just tuned in, you better not go nowhere. And if you're there, stay with us. We will catch you on the other side of this break. See ya. Hey, everybody, this is Garrett sitting here solo. <laughs> My partner ain't here, but that's okay. Because I have Chef Diane sitting next to me. Hello, hello. Uh, if you don't know her, you better get to know her. <laughs> you can find Chef Diane at the Divine Chef Experience.net. She provides divine personal chef services for you. Yes. Because you need some good food in your life, y'all. Yes, you need some family time back. That's what I try to do anyway. That's what it is. That's (laughs) That's what what it is. is. Yes, yes. So out of the last segment, um, you started talking about, you know, how you grew up Mm -hmm. in college Mm -hmm. and um, you left off with a really important story about um, how your dad gave you some insight that during a track meet when he watched you in the 11th grade, Mm -hmm. you were running hurdles 
And for those who don't know, when you're running a hurdle race, like 110 hurdles, mm -hmm. um, there's 10 hurdles mm -hmm. in the race. And Miss Diane, unfortunately, fell over nine. <laughs> Made it on the first one, but fell over the nine. Um, and an 11th grader at the time would not see the uh, importance of what was happening. Yes. But yes. Uh, fortunately enough, you had a father who had enough wisdom um, that would be able to share with you mm -hmm. the importance of the fact that even though you made it over the first hurdle mm -hmm. and then the next nine were challenges, you still got up to make it over the next nine. Mm -hmm regardless of the challenge. Exactly. And that told your father that he would never have to worry about you mm -hmm. moving forward. So, mm -hmm. so that, that's, that's a, a powerful story and a powerful imagery of how in this um, realm, in this game of entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. you have to understand that it's, 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 it's not, just like with most parts of life, it's not a constant flow, right? It's not an right. easy path. Mm -hmm. You will have some hurdles. Yes, that for sure. You will jump, try to jump over, but and you, you will fall. fall. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the moral of the story is you have to get up. Yes, for sure. For sure. Um, because not every day is going to be a sunny day. No. Um, and and, and you, ha you have to have that mentality of being, of, of perseverance. Mm -hmm. So what I want to dive into, Chef mm -hmm. Diane. Yes, yes. Is educate us on because I know you spent some time in corporate America. I did. Um, and talk to us about that uh, experience, um, what you gained from that experience, and when the point in time in your career that transition moment from corporate America into what we now know as divine personal chef services. Yes. Help us understand how, how that came to, to be. So graduated from college in uh, 2004, moved to Chicago, uh, and I worked for Aramark. Mm -hmm. um, pretty amazing company. I mean, they helped yeah. me get through college. <laughs> but uh, I wanted to be, again, first generation college student. Oh, got that. We're done. <laughs> Second was for me to basically build some financial stability around, you know, just having what I've never had. Yeah. And so we go to the University of Chicago and my goal, I said, I'm going to be the youngest VP. And if I just happen to be the only black one, that'll be good. Too. Yeah. So 21, I, I jump out the door and I'm running. Yeah. And so, um, of course, all of the people were male and much older than me. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm striving. So four years in, I'm doing amazing. I get a promotion. I move to Arizona. Okay. And um, now I'm overseeing a, you know, $20 million account. Yeah. Um, very, very young. And then here I am again. I'm like, I'm ready. Yeah. I get married. We move back to the Midwest, back to Chicago. Okay. Again, we're striving. We're, going, we're doing this thing, yeah. right? Uh, at this time, um, Spellman opens up um, uh, okay. an opportunity at Spellman. So it was going to bring me to Georgia. Yeah. And I didn't want it. And uh, Really? No, I did not want it. Uh, because I, was, I, was, I, was, I wasn't ready, I didn't think. Okay. Um, but this was going to be the only ch ch chance I had to have my own account and be that VP. Oh, I wanted. okay. So okay. I took it down to Spelman. Now, all this time, I'm overseeing dining programs, which means I oversee the entirety of that dining program, the catering department, the retail. Um, I'm a director of operations for the company yeah. um, at those universities. And so I'm able to create, without using my own money, mm. restaurants and concepts and menus. Oh, wow. And yeah. I oversaw chefs. So... Twelve and a half years in, I come down to Georgia, um, to Spelman, and all this time I had been telling God that I didn't want to do this anymore. <laughs> you know what? You need to be careful about what you tell God you don't want to do. And you don't listen, though. He gave me quite a few opportunities to leave, but I didn't. So I came down here, and uh, eight months in, it was it was it was a um, it was a rough situation. Okay. Uh, and after eight months, 
Um, have you ever watched Friday? Mm-hmm. You know how um, Smokey lost his job on his day off? <laughs> that was kind of how it happened. <laughs> <laughs> I just was at a point <laughs> where, um, you know, I had people underneath me and I thought I had done the things I needed to do. Yeah. And um, one day a situation happened on campus and I, my boss called and I was like, you can fire me. And of course I said it, but I don't know if I meant it in a way. Right. And so I went to work on that Monday and I had already kind of passed our pack in my office up because I, in my spirit, I kind of knew that it was coming. Mm-hmm. And so I took a severance package uh, and so I was going to be good for about almost a year, full year. Okay. Um, based off of the number of 12 and a half years I had worked for the company. So yeah. I was like, okay, well, okay. And then I went home and cried for probably a week. Um, so that, that's what, that was, that was 2015. In hmm. 2015, I left corporate America. And um, shortly after that, I started volunteering at a school in Lilburn. So can I ask you a question? Yeah. Before you get to the volunteering part. Mm-hmm. In the midst of you leaving, did you ever have a thought of going back? Oh, yes. Yes. So educate us on why you didn't go back. Because God kept shutting the doors. See, I knew that, y'all. But I <laughs> wanted you to hear. Yes. So I prayed about leaving. He shut the door, and I kept trying to open it up. And I would apply. I mean, I'm ha- I have 12 and a half years experience. Um, I have oversaw some, some very high-profile accounts. University of Chicago, mm-hmm. okay, Arizona State University, Spelman. Like, I've overseen these accounts, and they were not successful. They are very successful. Uh, and so I applied, and I applied, and I applied, and I, and I tried to use the resources that I had, connections that I had made, and they would give me and put me in the right position. I would get in there. Interview would go amazing. Mm. And they were like, oh, we found someone else. Or, oh, you know, we don't know if this is going to be a good fit. Or you have too much experience for this. Or... You, we can't pay you that amount anymore. You right. know, I went from making six figures, and so yeah. I'm like, okay, I'll take half of it. Right, I'll right. Ju- I just want a job. <laughs> I just want a job. No, it did not work. And so from April of 2015 to about November, no, I would say September, September of 2000, of that year. So, of, you know, a good four months, I'm <coughs> hitting, hitting the payment and nothing. So I wanted, I wanted folks to hear that. Um because that's not an uncommon mm-hmm. uh, story, right? Um, and, 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 and the main part about the story is the fact that, and you said it a couple of times, you said, you know what? I prayed and I asked God <laughs> to remove such, mm-hmm. that you didn't want to do it anymore. Mm-hmm. But you really weren't listening to what you were praying. Exactly. And not really thinking that he was listening. Exactly. Um, so put a pin right there mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and give me a moment of personal indulgence to where I did the exact same. Listen to me. Mm-hmm. The exact same thing. Really? While I was working for Bank of America. hmm um, what's the, the movie? The movie that, um, it's not called Prayer Closet, but, um, oh my God. Anyway. War Room? Yes. Thank yes. you. Yes. Mm-hmm. I saw War Room. Yes. Oh. And immediately after I saw <laughs> War Room, I went and I created my prayer closet, my war room. Yes. I created it. Uh-huh. Right. And, and, and had it, had it all situated and had... Um, a sheet that was prayers for um, for my for my family, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. prayers for my friends, mm-hmm. prayers for my job, and then last prayers for me. Okay, right. And those were the four main sheets that I had. Yeah. And on my job list, mm-hmm. now mind you, I was a career person. Mm-hmm. I've been working in corporate America for twenty three years. Yeah. Um, I was at a point where. I had these three specific prayers. One was, God, um, I need to find 
something new within the company that I was in. Okay. I was doing financial, I, I was doing IT in the financial industry. I was Got working it. for Bank of America. And I said, I need to find, because I, where I was at in the group I was at, I just wasn't feeling it. We mm-hmm. were just, we were not beginning. We were, it was very clear. We ain't seeing eye to eye. Right. Right. But you couldn't deny what I was bringing to the table. Correct. From an experience and, and understanding. Right. So I said, I need to find something else within the company. Or I need to find something else within the financial industry in IT. Mm. So it could take me to another company, another right. financial institution. Third, because by this time, we were here. So we had been in business with Puff Cuff for four years. Oh, okay. For four years, four, mm-hmm. four, four and a half years. I said, or allow me to become full-time CEO. Those are the three sp- very specific prayers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Prayed my, my war room prayer over and over and over, adding to my prayer list for everybody else, adding mine for work stayed the exact same over and over. <laughs> Came, we went on vacation mm-hmm. right around Father's Day. Mm-hmm. Bring, got home. Literally that Friday we got back. Mm-hmm. Hey, Garrett, we've been trying to get in touch with you. Really? Right. Took my boss 15 minutes to get out. It's been decided that we're going to move your portfolio to somebody else. Mm -hmm. I'm like, really? Mind you, see, this is how God works. Mm -hmm. I had, my portfolio was about a $54 million portfolio. Mm -hmm. And I oversaw the the, uh, technology for all the contact centers for Bank of America. Okay. And so I had about four, I had four major vendors that we worked with. Mm -hmm. I had already, every contract Mm -hmm. was set for the next three years. So all I had to really do is monitor the contracts until we got to a point where I had to renegotiate for the next round and so forth. And when she told me that, I'm like, but I did, I did all, all All this this is, all this work is, is set. There's nothing really. And it dawned on me. Well, that's why they moved it because they didn't nobody have to work. All they got to do is monitor mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. And just like you, mm-hmm. pound the pavement. Mm-hmm. There was an executive search firm that came with the yes. retirement package exactly. and everything. Yes. Went through the whole gambit. Mm-hmm. Oh, All of it. Oh, <laughs> oh man, you're not going to have a problem. We're going to find yes. you whichever, whatever you need. We got you. We got you. <laughs> Yeah, not a every single door closed, mm-hmm. closed, mm-hmm. Cl- interviews here. You need to talk to this person. He- here's a decision maker. Oh, mm-hmm. no, mm-hmm. it's not going to work. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Like your experience. Uh, no. Nope, yep. You'll be a value. But no, not just going to work. Yeah. 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 And literally, Seed and I sat one day and said, okay, look, God is, is obviously given, given us the answer mm-hmm. that I had been praying on. Yes. And we just sat there and said, okay, God, if this is what it, we're in. Mm-hmm. Jumped in with both feet. Now, mind you, we had just moved. Yes. <laughs> Bought a house. Uh-huh. I mean, every, it, it was, and, and <laughs> I was like, Okay, God, wait a minute. You, you're moving this direction, and you know I got all this other stuff. How am I going to take care? When we submit <sighs> and relinquish control. <laughs> and, 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 and I tell you, Chef Diane, mm-hmm. there are still days, and there always will be days, mm-hmm. where I literally ask, Really, am I, am I really that worthy? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Am I that special to you that you've provided? Every, Every single, single day. day. Yes, yes. And multiplied beyond. What you could ever imagine. Ephesians? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> so when someone, so, so, so your story is so parallel. And, and, yes. and, and whenever, when someone asks, 
who is an entrepreneur or, or is an, in, in that transition, mm-hmm. I, I literally tell them, I said, look, you, you need to make sure you are so grounded in your faith and understand where and what God has in store for you because there's things that he's already put in place yes. that you just don't understand. He's just waiting for you mm-hmm. to fully to trust. fully trust and relinquish all the control. Yeah, for sure. Woo! Okay, all right. <laughs> That's y'all sermon moment for today. No. Yes. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so um, we have two more segments coming up, y'all. And we're going to we're going to jump out of this segment and come back in um, on the other side and talk to Chef Diane about her business and about what she provides and the services um, and, and how you can benefit from it as well as as well as some of the pitfalls and things and knowledges and gems that she has about being an entrepreneur mm-hmm. and what it means um to be an entrepreneur and to be successful and to be okay with where God has taken you. And so I ask that you just stay put and and you keep your ears uh, posted, posted to this podcast and we'll catch you on the backside. All right. See you in a few. What makes America? You. Me. Every freckle. Every career. Every smile. Every tear. Each family. Each friend. It builds and makes us who we are. One community. Every boy, every girl. Each kink, each curl. We wouldn't change a thing because this is who we are. It's our differences and our similarities, our passions, and our fears. These are the things that keep us. These are the things that make America. Us. Our curls make us. We are America. We make Tangle Master. Hey, everybody out there in podcast land. This is Garrett here with Idea to Invention, sitting with the lovely chef Diane Thomas. Hello, hello. Of the Divine Chef Experience.net. Yes. Um, so, Chef Diane, let's talk about when you left corporate America and you mm-hmm. started. Your, your, your business, your, mm-hmm. your chef business, personal chef business. Let's talk about that and start from that beginning to where, and, and let's have this conversation of the start to where you are now and how that experience has been. Okay. That, I think some folks would really learn from, from where you've been. So I'm a firm believer that um, when you take care of God's house, he'll take care of yours. So uh, in the time that I left corporate America, I needed to get my mind off of me. Okay. <laughs> so I saw a listing for volunteer chef okay. at a little school in Lilburn. It was mm-hmm. called Lopa uh, Academy and uh, I signed up for it. Yeah. Right. I hadn't been in the kitchen cooking. I mean, you would find me in my suits cooking, but I hadn't been really in it for a while. So yeah. I took the position and I started volunteering. And then my son and I watched the movie, The Chef. Uh-huh. And my son was like, Mommy, why don't you start a food truck? Yeah. I'm like, I need capital for that. <laughs> so what am I going to do? It's about September. And uh, I basically am volunteering at this school. I have severance, so I'm not worried about right. your rent and everything. Right. So I'm like, now is the time to be free. And so I be- began to create menus for them. Um, at the time, they were um, not being the, they couldn't. They had no way to really feed the kids the, the proper way. Yeah. So I created menus, and I did all these things for this school. Amazing time. Um, 
And then it got to be about, I think, September, October, and somebody reached out and was like, could you cater something for us? Now, I had been kind of putting it out there that I left corporate America, and I was kind of be dibbling and dabbling. Yeah. And so I was like, but I need to be official. Um, at that time, I Googled what my name was. Yeah. I really don't know why, but I Googled <laughs> And it means divine. Yeah. And so I went on LegalZoom, and I created the Divine Personal Chef Experience um, as an LLC. Okay. I didn't know what I was going to do with it, but it was there. Was it? I wanted to be official. Yeah. I can't be catering people's stuff. I'm not a business. <laughs> uh, so there we were. We were, we were, we were in it. Uh, and then January came around, and I was like, okay, how do I build capital for this food truck that me and my son want? Yeah. And so I went on care.com. And I put out uh, a listing for if you wanted someone to just assist you with meal prep. Okay. So not necessarily cook for you, but just like prep it for you yeah. or odd jobs, laundry, all mm-hmm. these things. Again, I got severance, so money is an issue. And I was like, but what do I charge? I don't even know. I haven't worked in an hourly position in 12 years. Right, right. What am I doing with my life? Okay. <laughs> Care.com. I get a first booking. For, for January, I go in, I'm making $12 an hour. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, I don't need the money, so we just... <laughs> right. <laughs> so, okay. And then I asked this person to put um a, a review on care.com. Okay. And she put a review, and then here came a lawyer, and then she put a review, and then there was a lawyer friend, and then she put a review. And so there's a circle of lawyers that I began huh. to service. And then from there, there was doctors and there was, I mean, literally no marketing, no nothing. And so when I tell you it's divine, I completely and utterly am telling you that God leads the way that it has happened. Um, I still do no marketing. And so when I met your, um, came to your family, it was because your wife found me on it. Instagram. <laughs> and so when I tell you everything is so divine in my life, I, um, when I finally do, did relinquish the control, yeah. um, my services are based off me loving to serve others. So in the service mm. industry, that's really what it's about. I didn't yeah. go into food, the food um, serve. I have a, a, a bachelor's degree in food service administration and a minor in hospitalities. Okay. So I always wanted to love, love to serve people. Uh, I am, uh, you know, I'm the culinary director at my church. So I love to serve. Yeah. So that was what really was around um, is that people don't get to do that in oh. their own homes. They don't get to sit down and eat as a family. And we all remember you sat down and that's what you kind of got caught up. Yeah. Right. Oh, so, yeah. you know, people don't get to do that anymore. No, because um, they're running and running. They're running everywhere. and running. And I worked 15 hour days. And so my husband and my son didn't get the luxury of getting to sit down at a table Um uh, you know, I'm currently separated. Yeah. And so that is, I believe, a result of all of those things. I think that, that that's important. Yeah. So when I built this, it was around giving people their time back, helping them be able to eat well. Yeah. Because I think you eat real good. Oh, and then also. Y'all don't know the half of it. <laughs> and then also. We had, we had some lasagna last night. Oh, see, yes. See, oh, my God. It was so good. <laughs> So, so that is, and that's what I think the the, the joy for me is around. Um, it hasn't been easy. Um, that first year was really, really hard um, because sevens ran out way faster. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And you thought in the going... school that was volunteer, they couldn't pay, so yeah. I was driving all the way to Little Burn. Okay, from yeah. Smyrna. Um, but God kept telling me, "Get up and do it." And I got up and did it. And some days gas was looking like, you're on fumes. What are you doing? <laughs> right. You're not going <laughs> to make it. And some kind of way I made it. And so I just kept doing it. And I just kept doing it. And I just kept doing it. And um, and he made a way. And I can't explain it any other way. But you, but you were faithful. You were faithful with little. Yes, for sure. See? It, with, with, and that's what I think people really have to understand. Um, because... If he's going to trust you, because I, I, my son does remember us having a big home. He yeah. does remember a lot of those things. He's 11 now, yeah. but he was uh, about six then. He had just started first grade. 
And so I always tell him, God never takes away without making sure that whatever he gives you will be a multiplied, right? So I don't take it as a loss. Yeah. I take it as he needed to be able to, sometimes you got to weed out some things in mm-hmm. life. And, um, you know, he has to prune you because even though you think you're all that, yeah. you are not all that. <laughs> Because <laughs> I was, I was, I was amazing in corporate America. Yeah, I mean, I was, I really was. Um, but was I a real rounded person? Um, maybe not so much. Was I? Um, did I have a heart of a servant? I thought I did, but I really did. But you really did. Uh, so that's all the things that I learned, and I think that that was catapulted me. It's been five years, and one of my prayers a couple of years ago was like. You know, God, I just, I don't, I don't necessarily have to make six figures, but can I bring home mm-hmm. what I brought home? Yeah. And then that became a reality. And I was like, what? You listened and well, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> and then it was just like, um, you know, I, I kept hitting these goals yeah. and I'm a faithful tither. And I yeah. think that people have to understand that like you, you, you have to be faithful over, over the little, whether that's a building, a car, a Whatever the things that you may have, yeah. be faithful over those oh. small things, and he will give you all the desires of your heart. And I really, really, really believe that. Um, and so, like I said, the journey, whew. But <laughs> when you look back on it, it, it definitely, even this past this past year, 2019 was another discovery year yeah. um, for business. But it's been um, an amazing journey. So, with within the within the journey um what are some nuggets of of entrepreneurship or small business that you would say or, or you're writing in your journal you mm-hmm. here are some top nuggets that kind of just stand out about how to navigate being an entrepreneur i would say number 1 is be true to you Mm. And I would say that because many times people tell me I'm a, I um I undercharge. Yeah, you're worth so much more than that. <laughs> and my biggest thing is that for me, I feel like God gives you um what you need, um, but He also provides you your wants. Yeah. So I don't feel like I need to be a millionaire to live well. Yeah. Uh, and so when I say, oh, this is my pricing, mm-hmm. people's like, oh, my God, that's so small. That's not... But my clients, like, from from you all to um, the mayor of Atlanta, mm-hmm. like, I didn't solicit the mayor. Yeah. I got her from relationships that I built. People trusted me off of my, not just like loyalty but there has to be a true trust for me to come into your home because not only do i do i have a meal delivery yeah. i go into people's homes monday through friday yeah as a personal chef i am in three individuals home a day yeah. um, they are usually not home you have to be able to trust someone oh. a character completely right? completely trust them with your home with your food with all those things and so i feel as though be true to yourself don't listen to what people will tell you what your Mm. business needs to be. Um, That's major. Um, Trust the process. It doesn't always look like it's going to work. But if you're true to yourself, you know that God has aligned things in a way where it's going to work. How do you help someone? Okay. How do you help someone who's just starting Mm -hmm. to understand that statement of trust the process? Because see, there, someone from the outside looking in mm-hmm. would say, "Oh, you had this clientele, you got this, and the man, you get all this, but they don't understand the process mm-hmm. over the X amount of years it took for you to get to. How do you help them understand that? No, there's a process. It's, it, this is not a sprint. No, this this is not." Your 110 hurdles, this is your 300 hurdles. Yes, this is endurance. This is your this endurance. Is, yeah. So I think it's it's about you can only show people. Yeah. I can tell you everything in the world. But if you are willing to to, to see it and, and see it through, like, for instance, you know, I, I look at it like if you saw me in 2016 when I was on the verge of eviction, mm-hmm. 
to 2020. That's an, that's not a whole long time. No. Right? To now, uh, you know, January of 2020 was the first year that I, like, could take Christmas off and my rent be paid. <laughs> and, and I have to think about what am I going to grind and how am I going to do because yeah. that first year was learning. It's like you have, sometimes you you have to go through it yourself. Sometimes mm. you have to trust the process yourself because I've trusted my process. Yeah. So yeah. It's, the saddest part is that sometimes you just got to got to grunt through it. Um, and I can tell you because I can tell you every mark on what I went through and that it works. I can also say how many times had God failed you. Yeah. And if you can mark the times he failed you, then he's going to fail you. Yeah. But I bet you can't. I bet you can't. I bet you Ooh. cannot. Wow. Okay. So you said be true to self, trust the process. And the third one is, is that stop asking everybody for advice. And the reason I say that is because sometimes what God is giving you, nobody's ever done. Mm. So the whole generational curse um, things and I'm breaking those curses and things. And sometimes for me, yeah. because I've been the first to do a lot of things. I yeah. was the first to go to college, first to work a corporate job, first to get married, first now to oh, get a wow. divorce. For, so I'm a first of a lot you are first of things. Of a, yeah. right? And so because I didn't, I don't have anybody to ask those advices to. Okay. So for me, sometimes it's like not necessarily advice about the things that, okay, common knowledge things, okay, mm-hmm. getting you ahead. But sometimes God gives you a vision. And when yeah. you talk to too many people, it taints it, right? I love my mother to death, mm-hmm. but she doesn't understand my vision. Yeah. She never understood it from the get-go, right? But I love her. She's my mother. So sometimes when you, you have to pick and choose the people you will but take the, advice from. But the thing is, it's not her vision. Exactly. It's mine. It's yours. It's mine. So taking advice, so why go to her mm. and say, Mom, I got this great idea. She she will never be able to see it through, and she probably will cut it down, so then now I doubt my vision, right? Oh. So you can't take advice from everyone. That's will be my third one. <laughs> Y'all listen now. Chef Diane gave you a very key, very key thought. Not when you have a vision, that means that whatever scales were on your eyes have been removed and you're now able to see mm-hmm. what God has in store for you. Not everyone, their scales may still remain mm-hmm. so that they won't be able to see. So you have to, you have to seek discernment yes. to understand mm-hmm. who you should be seeking advice from. Girl, you done preached up in here. See, <laughs> all my guests is up in here preaching today. Okay. Woo, this has been good. Okay. Yeah. So we have our last segment coming up. Okay. Um, and when we, in that segment, um, I want to know a few things. Mm-hmm. Have you always known that you would be working in your passion? In your gift. Mm-hmm. And number two, um, with you and your baby boy, and with the busyness that's occurring and mm-hmm. the amount of work that's, which is a blessing, mm-hmm. how do you find balance? Yes. Those are some two key things I want to find out okay. from you, and then we'll close out Sounds and call good. it a day. Yes, oh, yes. y'all, listen, <laughs> if you are listening and you just joined, that's all right. You joined at the right time. Yes. Joined at the time was meant for you. <laughs> but if you've been listening, stay tuned. Stay, keep your ears to this podcast because more information is coming your way with Chef Diane Thomas and your boy Garrett. We'll catch you on the other side. See ya.
everybody this is garrett here for eye to eye missing my butter half but that's okay we've been having a really really good time in this podcast session with the lovely and talented miss chef diane thomas and we are just so appreciative to have you here it's just this has been phenomenal yes, phenomenal thank phenomenal you so much. oh my god so um We've been dropping some really good gems for folks today. Mm -hmm. But I want to ask a question. And these two last questions are of a personal touch, mm -hmm. if you will. Um, did you ever know or, or think that you would be working in your passion or your gift? Did, did you know that this would be... Because see, you know... Everybody always asks, well, I don't know what my gift is. I don't know what my passion is. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. And I really think that that it's in front of them. Yes, for sure. I mean, I think it's really an obvious, but they, it's, they make it too difficult to mm -hmm. see. Number one, did you ever know and when did you realize that you were? I did know. Uh, and it was in college. Mm -hmm. So spring break, everybody's partying, and me and my friends are doing alternative spring break. <laughs> We're doing alternative spring break, and I'm volunteering, being the homeless. Um, we go to um, Surrey, West Virginia. We're in Texas, and we're all over these places every year. I'm yeah. on alternative spring break. So I'm paying to volunteer, and I say, hmm, people look at me crazy, right? But during that time, we did a, a volunteer with um, Waste Not Want. It was a, basically like they would collect food from different places, and yeah. then they would create meals and feed the homeless. And I was like, I'm going to do this one day. Didn't know what that really meant. Yeah. College, I created this thing about I was going to have a, a cafe. It was called Cookies Cafe, right? But when I got into corporate America, all those things went away, right? Hmm. Um, and I used to say, I'm going to volunteer this. I'm going to do this. this. No. But once I left corporate America, yeah, it was my opportunity to like, you know, that's why the first thing I did was volunteer. Yeah, I volunteered. So I I knew it. I just didn't know when it was gonna happen. I just didn't oh. know when and how I was gonna be able to put all those things together. Uh, so when I left and I yeah. was able to do that, then I joined my church. Okay. And then my pastor says, would you be in charge of the culinary? And I said, no, I don't want to oversee any person ever again. Um, but I heard God say, you told me that. And so I said yes. Mm -hmm. And it's been about three, f almost four years that yeah. I've been overseeing that. Uh, and so we feed on Sundays, the commu you know, community, whoever comes to the church. So like I said, I knew it. I just didn't know when I was going to be able to walk into that. Yeah. Uh, and so it's amazing. So when people say they're praise and worship, that's my praise and worship. I get to ah. go on Sunday morning. I get to cook for everybody and, you know, see their smiles. Yeah. And, you know, all that kind of stuff. And um, that's been the most amazing part. And I do foresee that, uh, you know, someone's going to bless me with a food truck. You know what they're going to, what I'm going to do with that? It's not for profit. I want to open a food truck and I want it to be for, to feed the homeless. Um, Jaden Smith, mm -hmm. Will Smith's son, yeah. he does the same thing in California. I've been wanting to do it for years, and when I saw it, I was like confirmation that it can be done. And this is basically a food truck that, you know, if all my other businesses make money, it'll yeah. fund the food truck, and I'm I won't sure have to will. worry about it. And so I will be able to go to parks because you have to be permitted to feed now. You can't just yeah. go and set up. Um, so the question is, the answer to your question is yes. Always okay. knew it, just never knew how just it never went, knew how it went, how it was gonna be. Hey, Jaden Smith, if you out there, yeah, brother, brother, <laughs> we have another opportunity for you right here in Atlanta. Right here in Atlanta. Yes, yes. Wow, that that's that's phenomenal. That mm -hmm. I mean, because not not everybody uh, as, are able to see it. Yes, for sure. That's that's. To me, that's that's such a blessing to be able to be able to know, but you to be able to know that that's yes, that's my gift, that's my call, mm -hmm. that's what I'm gonna do. And the only thing about it that you don't know is when, when, when it was gonna be able to happen. Ooh, wow. Mm, mm, mm. Okay. So well, serving you all is is a part of that also, because that's 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 the gratitude that I get, the appreciation. 
you know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So that's that's a part of my personality, right? Wow. So So out of all of the journey, um the highs, the lows, mm -hmm. uh, brand new entrepreneur comes mm -hmm. to you. Mm -hmm. What's the one resonating piece of advice you would give them? <laughs> uh, that you can't build from an empty cup. Oh, you need to elaborate on that one. So a lot of times we serve others. We're building these businesses. We're doing all these things and we're looking crazy and we feeling like crazy and we're not eating right. And we're, we're over, like, we're not doing what we need to do for ourselves. Uh, sadly, it took me till, I guess this is year five, <laughs> <laughs> um, to be able to really ac um, extract different things yeah. and um, build the business to a place where I can take care of myself. Mm -hmm. um, because I was like, no, I need this money. I need to stack this because I know the seasons that is slower. Yeah. I know those things. But self-care. You cannot serve others and be the best and build up this, you know, empire. Yeah when you're not fully whole, whether that be your mental, your wow. physical, any of those things, uh, you have to take care of you. And I think that a lot of times, you know, I, I am currently in the process of, um, you know, being separated for two years. So, um, and he's my boy. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't want people to think, no, we are, we're, we are, we were great friends. We were high school, you know, all those types of things. It's just that we didn't work, right? Right, yeah. But at the end of the day, it's like that is a positive relationship. Now, you know, all those things trickle into your work and everything else you do. Right. So self-care, you got to take care of you. you gotta. Wow. So y'all listen, and it's, it's so important. So you, as you're becoming an entrepreneur, as you're taking your idea to invention, whether it's a product, whether it's a service, mm -hmm. um, you will work, trust me on this, more than you thought that you would work. For sure. Um, and time may get away from you because you may be blessed enough to be working in something that's, that is a gift, that's a passion, that it just doesn't seem like work. No. But you have to be mindful that you have to take care of who you are. Yes. Yeah. So that you're able to wake up and do your passion. Mm -hmm. So that you're able to be, you know, sufficient mentally, yes. spiritually to serve. Mm -hmm. Right. Because eventually in the end, your business, whether it's a service or a product, is to serve others. Yes. Yes. And if you look at it that way, oh, thank you, Jesus. So yes. it, it, it's, it's just it, you have to take care of yourself. You have to take care do, of yourself. Do not, do not neglect the fact that. Um, you haven't, you know, gone and got a pedicure or manicure or yeah. massage, you know, do those small things to keep you going. Yes. Um, and spend time with your family. That is so important. Cause self care that that's a part of it. That's also. a part of it. That's also. a part of it. And so over the last year I've learned to kind of sector off my business. Yeah. You know, um, there's a meal prep. There's a personal chef piece. There's dinner parties. Mm -hmm. um, so is it, if anyone's looking to do an in-home dinner party or graduation is coming up, uh, if you book now, you can get $100 off of your booking. And that's for those what? seniors that are coming out, those summer dinner parties you want to do. Um, so there's different sectors of my business. And because I'm able to sector those off, I've been able to spend more time with my son yeah. and hire people and you know, that's the most exciting part of the fifth year into the right. journey because you got to learn that um, you have to be able to relinquish some control. Oh. Y'all, listen, y'all got some nuggets today. <laughs> Again, you know where my, you know how to contact me. You can send me Cash App. <laughs> you can pay me whatever, however you choose to want to pay me for these nuggets of information. Yes, yes. yes. So it's, it's been a pleasure. All mine. Chef Diane, thank you, thank so, you much. so much. You're so welcome. Hey, you all, listen. You can find her at thedivinechefexperience.net. That's T H E D I V I N E C H E F experience.net. Yes. 
you have to find her because you will. I love my mama. <laughs> but listen, mama got competition. Oh, no. Chef, oh, Diane, no. Chef Diane, for real, y'all. Um, <laughs> but in all honesty, yeah. again, thank you so much. You're welcome. It's thank such a pleasure so to have you. Um, and y'all, um, in, in, in light of me missing my better half and she not being here, you know that she always likes to send us, send us out with these final parting words. We pray that everything is going well for you and that you take care of yourself. So we ask that you take care, be blessed, and be a blessing. God bless. See ya. Yeah.